What's going on today? I wanted to talk to you guys about how to get started reselling with no money. And I got a couple different methods in mind. There's one that I've previously done in a whole YouTube series called From the Closet to Profit. If you're popping in, uh, let me know down in the comments where you're popping in from. If you have, if you are a reseller, let me know how you got started. Drop that down in the comments. Uh, I just want to see who is in here with me. But anyway, two ways on how to get started reselling with no money down. Again, one of them I did a whole series on called From the Closet to Profit. It is about almost a two-year-old series now. Um, early last year, I think, is when the last episode came out. What's up, Drew? What's up, D2C Vlogs? Thanks for popping in. Uh, basically, the way that I did it that way is I took a pair of shoes out of my closet. That was the you know, the, the name of the series from the closet to profit. We're finding shoes in my closet and then flip them online for a profit. Uh, Hey, Florida fly, Florida finds. Thanks for catching my lives. I haven't done a live in a long time, but hopefully this can be a more regular thing. Also drew, I'm sorry. I'm missing dinner for this. You know, I, that's on me. That is on me, but getting started with no money down. I guarantee you one of one of you, all of you probably have something in your house, in your closet that you do not use. That's probably the the easiest way to get into reselling. I feel like every single person that is in reselling got started by selling something on eBay that they had in their house. What's up, David? Hey, Kim. Thanks for popping in. Drew, forgive me. What's up, Kim? Um, found something in their closet that they didn't need and they sold on eBay. That is pretty much the easiest way to get started. In that series, I just took a couple pairs of shoes, beat up shoes that I didn't even wear anymore and sold those online for a couple bucks. I think both of the, both of the shoes each sold for like $40 plus shipping. And they were, I got two years plus out of those shoes and they still sold for that amount on eBay and Mercari at the time. And then I took that, that profit and went straight to the Goodwill bins, which is the pay by the pound store. I'm sure most of you guys, if you caught my Goodwill bins video, know that in my area, not the best. I don't have the best luck with the Goodwill bins, but at the time I was able to take the few dollars that I made from selling those shoes out of my closet and then hop into the Goodwill bins and find a few more pairs. And the snowball just really, really starts going. If you want to go catch, catch that series, I'll leave that down in the description below if you're catching the replay. Uh, but there is a second, second option. If you don't have something in your house, you don't have something you can just pop on eBay. Cause you know, not everything's worth selling just because it's something that you don't use does not mean that there's someone out there that's going to use it. Because if you're not using it, there might be a reason that you are not using it. But I got another option. If you don't have anything to, to, um, to sell of your own that I want to talk about in today's video, I just bought those furry Crocs from you yesterday. Don't worry. I'll pay tomorrow. That going to love him. I'm a shoe seller trying to follow your model. Appreciate that D2C vlogs. Um, if I keep sending you some payment reminders, don't, don't freak out. I just, that's one of my uh, daily routines as I pop on eBay and just send out payment reminders. Hey, Lori, thanks for popping in. Thanks for catching the live. We are talking about how to get started on eBay or get started reselling with no money down. If you're listening to this, let me know down in the chat um, how you got started. What was the first thing you sold? Was it something of your own? Did you get started with a fund of some kind, like most of us resellers get started with no money. So I want to hear some stories. If anybody wants to tell them, I can pop those up on the screen. But what I've been obsessed with over the past like three or four months is, you know, I, I'm obviously well seasoned as a reseller, but I still have that, like that urge to go out and find something that I can flip online for a profit. And lately, um, as at first off, as many of you guys know, I'm only selling, I only sell shoes. My whole business business model is to just sell shoes on eBay and Poshmark to keep everything streamlined. I want to make sure that, you know, everything that I do is done for a reason. Like all of my photo processes, the inventory, the listing, all of that is the same thing. Every, th every single day, I want to treat my reselling business like an actual business. Kim said the first thing that she sold was a shirt. What kind of shirt did you sell? How much did you get for it? Let me know down there in the comments, but I just lost my train of thought. Um, I was talking about how I'm only selling shoes, but this thing that has caught my attention lately is dumpster diving. And I want to talk to you guys about this because I've been actually killing it. I haven't been like driving around town, going to dumpsters. This is literally the apartment trash can in my apartment complex is just all of a sudden become a gold mine that I've just been missing out on apparently. And I wanted to talk about this because a lot of people think that you need money to get started reselling and you really don't. There's money laying all over the place. 
I just wanted to top on here and talk to you guys about some of the stuff that I found in the trash can. It's, it's so crazy. I'm sure most of you guys either live in an apartment complex or near an apartment complex and people are just throwing away gold every single day. I, the first thing that um, I found me and Carly were driving home from, I think restocking her antique booth. And we pulled a, pulled around because usually the way that my apartment comp complex works is they have, they, the maintenance people will pull everything out of the dumpster and you like, there's like a caged in place where you can put like furniture and stuff, but they'll, if there's anything left outside, they'll like move it and then they'll move it into the caged in place into the dumpster and you can't get in there. But if you catch it before they get to it, you can kind of dig through it and see what people are selling. And the first thing that, that we actually came up on was someone got rid of, I guess, a bunch of their old, like not, it wasn't really collector stuff. It was just like video game stuff that people don't really need. At first, I thought I struck gold because I had a whole ton of uh, video games like Xbox 360 video games, uh, but they weren't, there were only discs in like four of the cases. Uh, let me get caught up on some of the chat real quick. Lori said she got started during the shutdown in 2020 selling her kids' clothes on Poshmark, mostly for something to do and clean out. Elizabeth says she sells everything, hotel room cards, empty bottles, used pens, shopping bags, empty iPhone and iPad boxes. That's interesting. I didn't know hotel room cards had a market. That's just That just goes to show. I'm sure one of you guys has stayed in a hotel before and you have just a hotel card laying around that could start your reselling business right there. Take that. I don't know what they sell for, but you know, take that to the bins and you might have a shoe reselling business sitting right in front of you. Once you leave your hotel room, <laughs> Florida fine says they're in Jacksonville, just got out of the military and I'm doing schooling, but I got bored. So I started reselling two months ago, watching you and ready set resell, but I only sell shoes now. How's that been going for you? I know that um, selling shoes really just skyrocketed me into actually being able to do this full time. So getting everything, streamlined like we've been talking about it's a game changer um elizabeth grabs from curbs and alleys that's another great one i like i said i don't have a ton of time to just go out dumpster diving this is just something like i'm at my apartment complex and i can see this stuff there and i can just go check it out uh but people just sit stuff out on the curbs you know i'll be driving to my storage unit or driving to the post office and you'll see things sitting on the curb you can just pick that up there's, there's, uh, there's an arbitrage right there. People, especially furniture, people don't want to sell that. Don't want to deal with that. They just sit it on their curb. And if you want to, if you have a truck, if you have the ability to sell furniture, that is a very, very good way to get started. I remember it's, I wasn't even a reseller really at the time, but, uh, four or five years ago, I didn't have a dining room table at my apartment. And funny enough, we've come full circle and I still don't have a dining room table at my apartment. But at the time I found a dining room table that was all beat up, but it was solid wood sitting on the side of the road. And I picked it up because I needed a apartment or a uh, dining room table. Didn't have a lot of money, seen the opportunity there, pulled over, grabbed that dining room table, brought it to my apartment, laid out a tarp in the spare bedroom because, you know, I don't really have anywhere to work. I didn't have a garage or anything. So laid out a big tarp in my spare bedroom, sanded it down and then stained it, finished it. And that was my dining room table. Again, wasn't a reseller at the time. So that wasn't the intention. I just wanted to use it and I wanted it to look nice. And then at the time of moving out of that apartment, I had a table that I could, I didn't want to take with me, but I listed it up on Facebook marketplace for, I want to say a hundred dollars for the table by itself. And it sold pretty quickly. I, I didn't sell it for the full hundred. I think I sold it for $80, but that was a table that I found on the side of the road, brought into my apartment, stained it, finished it. I, and this is a whole nother, um, sec, section segment of reselling is flipping for like upcycling furniture. There's huge, huge margins to be made there if you have the time to dedicate into doing it. But again, if you want to do that one time, just that one flip, that's $80 to get put into your reselling business. So Curbs Alley's great way to find cheap or free, usually free if it's on the curb or in the alley, inventory to get started. Love Facebook Marketplace for the free stuff. That's another great one. Facebook Marketplace. I think Craig's, Craigslist is kind of dead now. I haven't really heard of anybody buying things or selling things on Craigslist, but Craigslist used to have a free section. Another great place to find some furniture for free that people don't want to get rid of. Um, what's the other app that I've been using? Uh, Nextdoor. Nextdoor is a really good one. Depending on your area, 
Uh, you can hop on next door. They have a free section. Again, a lot of furniture. That's usually what you're going to get in the free section is furniture, or you might come up on something nice. Uh, but most of the stuff is going to be furniture, but next door, if you're not on next door, it's a great way to, even if you're not like sourcing things from there in the free section, it's a good place to like engage with the people around you and build networking opportunities just cause you never know. Maybe if you, if you're like me and you sell shoes full time, you never, the person that lives right up the road might get pallets of shoes in and you had no idea, but you posted on next door and you made a little connection there. Uh, what's up, Caden? Thanks for popping in. Lori said, when when so decided to resell for profit i started ebay with Wii stuff that's that's a good thing to start with the video game stuff always sells so quick faya says what's up from jacksonville elizabeth says thrift shoe lots on ebay is huge to make a lot of profit i have not ever bought a lot of shoes on ebay maybe i'm missing out on something there um i had know i've looked occasionally but i haven't put a lot of effort into it because it's one of those things like online arbitrage you got to like be consistent with it. Just like when you're going thrifting, you know, you go into a thrift store, you might strike out the first time, but if you're consistent with it, you're going to start finding things. And online arbitrage is the same way. And I, I, a lot of, a lot of times fall into that trap of like, I strike out the first 30 minutes of my sourcing online and then just like put my phone down and don't care anymore. Uh, TCR says, hello, bestie, the college reseller, the, the courageous reseller. He's not in college anymore. I don't know what we're calling him, but what's up, Ethan? Thanks for popping in. Been selling old watches and coins lately that I inherited. There's another way, you know, get started with no money down, just inherit things. If you uh, um, don't have a reason to inherit things, you might just like sneak into your parents' house and, you know, see something they're not using might, you know, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Um, Jess says, I walk dogs as my other primary job and have a hundred percent taken things from the side of the road and sold them. Pretty sure I've stumbled upon people who were evicted or put out their ex's belongings. That's genius. If you're a dog walker, start looking for that stuff. Maybe, maybe pull a little wagon behind you, find some stuff on the side of the road. Uh, funny enough, the uh, number one comment that I get, cause I share some of the, the dumpster finds that I find on my Instagram and everybody that sees it DMs me is like, that's probably a, an ex throwing away their, their, uh, significant other stuff or some mad wife. That's the, that's the number one thing that people think happened. But anyway, back to back circling back a little bit here, um, to, the things that I found in the dumpster at my apartment complex. When I told you guys I came up on that um, like video game stuff sitting outside, it was like, it was after the apartment closed. So the uh, the maintenance people hadn't had a chance to get to it yet. And it wasn't anything crazy um, or at least what you would think to be crazy. It was just like em empty video game cases, empty boxes. Um, but the empty boxes actually were some of the best finds in that entire lot. I want to see if I can share my screen here for a second. Hit the share screen to monitors. Let's see if that, nope. Manage paid and shipped orders. There we go. Let's see if I can pop this in here. If you guys can see, I'm probably giving away some people's names here, but these, I sold this empty Nintendo DS XL box. I found this in the trash can, in the trash can. It took me like two months to list because it's not shoes. I listed it a hundred dollars. It's just a box. It's literally just a box. And I sold it for $85 free shipping. And I found two of them. I found the uh, Pokemon red or whatever this is. And the, the Pikachu edition of the same one. I guess I can go back and show you guys that one. It was just, just free money sitting in the trash can. And this, this is an easy way, you know, Obviously a $0 buy cost because we're getting it out of the trash selling for, what would that be? $170. If my math is right there, $170 free shipping, taking out your fees, obviously taking out the shipping. They're cheap to ship because they're just empty boxes. Toss them in a, uh, I just threw them in the uh, shoe boxes that I use. They ship cheap and that's $120, $110, $120 that you can take to straight to the thrift store. You can kind of skip the bin step if you don't have the bins in your area like me that just aren't performing very well. If your bins aren't doing well, $110 is plenty enough to go in and buy 10, depending on the prices in your area, maybe 10 to 15 pairs of shoes that we can list online and sell for a profit. I still see we still have about 30 people in here. Haven't seen too many origin stories. How'd you guys get started reselling? Like I said, we're talking about my apartment's dumpster right now. If I hadn't been where I'm at in my reselling journey, 
and I wanted to get into reselling, I would be sitting outside my apartment's dumpster all day, every day, looking for these cheap flips to sell online to jumpstart my eBay business. I know a lot of people, I get DMs all the time asking me how to get started without any money because they don't have a lot of money. Maybe they're like a high school kid. You guys would be surprised how many high schoolers hit me up that want to get into reselling and they just don't know how to get started because they don't have any money. And this thing, you don't need money. There's money lying around everywhere. So if you guys have any stories about how you got started, let me know down in the comments below. I'd have Carly come share her origin story, but she wasn't having it tonight. Didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> she's she's chuckling from the other room. Teddy, what's up? Thanks for popping in. Got started in high school, sold my own clothes first, still perfecting and learning, trying to grow monthly profit margins. That's perfect. Sold my own clothes first. As we mentioned earlier in the video, I have a whole series called From the Closet to Profit. It's pretty much the blueprint. If you only want to sell shoes because that's what that series was based off of. I didn't sell anything but shoes. I took two pairs of shoes out of my closet, uh, a pair of Jordan 1 mids, nothing special. I know they're Jordan 1s, but they, they weren't a sought after model. And I'd played plenty of basketball in those and they were not in amazing condition. Those and some Nike Flyknit Reacts that I wore for like two years. Both of them sold $40, excuse me, plus shipping. And then I used that money to go to the Goodwill bins, pick up some shoes that were in not amazing condition, but had that low buy cost, sold those as quick as possible for, I want to say like 20 to 25 plus shipping. And then that really just snowballed the reselling business through that YouTube series. Because once you, once you get out there and you start being consistent, you have that fund built up and you're hitting thrift stores all the time, you really start hitting those home runs because you might not hit a home run the first thrift store that you go to. But if you're out there consistently, you're really putting your, what's the saying, putting your nose to the grindstone, you will find home runs eventually. And those are what's going to start snowballing and compounding very, very fast. What's up, bearded pokey tuber? Haven't seen you in a while, probably because I haven't done a live in a while, but thanks for popping in. Ashley Pick'em All Resell says, cleaning out my parents' basement that was filled with my childhood items they never got rid of. I don't know about you, but... I kind of regret selling all of my childhood items there. I think about this every single day. There's so many things that I had as a kid that I wish I still had things that I had had as a kid, a perfect example. This is a funny story. Mario superstars, super sluggers, superstars, baseball, the GameCube game. That was my favorite game as a kid. And I'm not joking. I've bought that game four times because I decided I probably should show my rock climbing messed up hand there, but I bought it four times. The first one, that I had when I was playing it when I was younger. And then I kind of got into the eBay scene. I was like, I don't need it. This is worth like $30. Let's get rid of it. I sold it and then repeated that process because I missed the game, sold it, missed the game, sold it. Now the one that I have now, I refuse to let myself sell it. I don't care. It could become the most expensive game in the world. I'm not getting rid of it. I have learned my lesson there. Wyatt Turney, what's up, Turney? Thanks for popping into the live. How'd you get, restart get started on reselling? Um, or farming. How'd you get started farming? Let's hear your farming origin story. You see vlog says I started last year in July, but I'm still only at two a day shoes only. You're saying you're still at listing two a day because that's, that's amazing. I mean, that's the first step hitting that starting and hitting a listing goal consistently is huge. I don't care if it's one thing every single day or if it's a hundred things every single day, as long as you have started that goal, that's when it starts really looking like a business. eBay sees you're posting consistently. They're going to start consistently sending traffic your way and you're going to start seeing consistent sales. So what, again, whether it's one or a hundred, I'm proud of you. After Christmas, Tone Morris, I haven't seen that name yet. Thanks for popping in. After Christmas, brand new, no box, Michael Kors, live trainers, no drag, not first grab, but ties into your origin story currently listed at 99 best offer. Hope those sell fast for you. Just said laid off full-time job around Christmas, 2018. That's another thing. A lot of us resellers have in common is getting laid off of jobs. Um, laid off full-time job around 2018 was up for trying various side hustles and started researching reselling after finding an ostrich pillow at the thrift store. Fun flip. That's cool. That's cool. I've never, I can't say that I've ever sold a pillow before. Um, and probably, probably won't. I don't even know how to ship a pillow. Is it something you just put in like a trash bag or a big poly bag? I know nothing about anything other than shoes. 
Teddy says, I think about that too. There are some childhood items I sold when I first started and regret. Yeah, that that high that you get once you realize that you can list something online and make money, it it's it's undefeated. Like you get that high and then you just list every single thing in your home and it all sells and then you're left with absolutely nothing. Uh, I've been there. I've definitely been there. Beard PokeTuber been grinding shoes only hard for the last eight-ish months, doing very well. You're right about finding those home runs if you're consistent. I find $100 plus pairs of shoes weekly. Same here. Love that. Because uh, as I'm sure you know, you're doing very well. Our businesses aren't built on the home runs. But if you're super consistent with the thrifting, they're going to come. They are going to come. D2C Vlogs says, listen to listing, listing to a day? Listing to a day, I have about... 104 active right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Love it. Two a day and seven active. Keep it up. Love to see that. Oh, and that's the end of the chat. Now we can go back to some of my dumpster finds because that's really all I'm here for. I just wanted to brag to you guys about the stuff that I've been finding in my dumpster. <laughs> um, just the, just last week, the week before last, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I found some Titleist golf clubs just chilling next to the, next to the dumpster. That was, that was the best dumpster flip I've had yet. Uh, because those, I didn't literally sell them the same day, but I had a committed buyer the same day. Carly just posted a video of me picking up these golf clubs out of my, uh, apartment's dumpster and bring them to the car. I shared that to my story, had two people show interest. And then next Sunday I sold those golf clubs, the whole bag for $150. But inside of that bag were some FootJoy golf cleats that went into my eBay store that I've got listed right now for like 49 plus shipping. So it could be a $200 flip straight from the trash can if those sell full price. But that was definitely definitely the pro most profitable thing. And I wanted to also mention, I'm not, I'm not super knowledgeable, not super versed on a bunch of different categories. Like I don't know the specifics of anything other than shoes, like the, like the nitty gritty. And I'll explain here in a second. Uh, bearded pokey, pokey tuber said, did you sell them local? I did sell them local. Uh, someone met me at rock climbing and picked them up from me there. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, one more time. I got a couple more sales that a lot of people I guarantee would just look right over. And I almost looked over both of them because they just, they don't seem like something that people would buy. And this first one's not a huge sell. Like it didn't make me a ton of money, but if I've got $0, this is the perfect, perfect thing to resell. It's this empty box, another empty box. You guys are seeing the trend here. A lot of people don't put value into boxes. This is the legend of Zelda twilight princess on Wii U, the amiibo edition. Like I knew it was Zelda. The box looked in good condition. I knew in the back of my mind that some things still sell. Like there's collectors that want to put these things on their shelves and they don't care about having the thing that's actually inside the box. So I'm like, I might as well look this one up. So I went ahead and took it back to my apartment and the comps weren't like amazing or anything, but I saw that there was one that sold. I didn't sell this one full price. I accepted an offer. I listed it at $12 plus $10 in shipping. Uh, honestly overpriced the shipping because you know I don't know what I'm doing in anything except for shoes, but I accepted an offer of $10 plus shipping. Not a ton of money, but taking out eBay's fees, and the shipping cost, which I overcharged for, I'm still getting back over $10 for something that I found in the trash, an empty box that people didn't, that someone just discarded. And somebody out there on eBay decided they wanted this. It was worth $10 to them. So then after finding this, if I'm new, if I haven't got started, if I don't have a ton of money to get into reselling, I've got $10 to, again, take to the Goodwill bins. Or if your thrift stores are cheap, $10 isn't going to get you much here in Orlando or pretty much anywhere in Florida. Like, let's just be honest. A lot of parts of the countries, the thrift stores are getting pretty expensive. $10 is not going to get you much in terms of shoes if you're wanting to start a shoe reselling business. But maybe if you're wanting to start a pillow reselling business, you might be able to find an ostrich pillow for less than $10. But if you're wanting to get into shoes, that $10 is more than enough to go to the Goodwill bins, find three pairs of shoes that, you know, they're not going to be in the best condition. It's just how the Goodwill bins works. You might, you might hit a home run, but $10 is more than enough to get started. Let me see. I had another sale I wanted to show you guys. Another thing that I, again, just on here to brag about my trash can. <laughs> uh, this one, this one caught my eye. Um, I messed up my share screen button. Let's see if we can do this one more time. 
Share screen. There we go. This is another one. I just brought in a whole bin of these Xbox 360 games. And I had no idea what this was. So I Google lensed it. It's another, another good tip. If you guys are trying to figure out the model of a pair of shoes or you have something that you just don't know what it is, you don't know how to look up comps on it, Google Lens, just download the Google app on your phone and hit that camera icon and you can just snap a picture of anything and it's going to search the internet for that item, a picture of something that looks like that item. You can see my picture, my photo set up here. Didn't have a photo set up for anything but shoes. So you got my entire living room in the background. Nonetheless, these things, this, this Skyrim dragon base thing, I don't even know what it is. Sold for $39 or $40 plus shipping. It might have even been $44 plus shipping. And it's just a plastic base. So I charged $540 standard shipping or whatever the first class was to wherever it went. And it was just a few bucks to ship. Found this in the trash. I don't, if the, if you find the entire sculpture to this thing, I think it's worth like 150 bucks. I think Josh Harry Tornado found one in one of his flea market videos. I only, I only recognized it because I found one in the trash can a few days before that. And maybe this is a little bolo. If you see the whole statue, $150, but I just found the base. Someone probably just broke the statue and decided to get rid of the base. But somebody, somebody thought that was worth $44 plus shipping to them. Again, easy way to get started. Bearded Pokétuber says, yeah, I'm able to keep an average buy cost around nine bucks a pair and average sale price, including shipping of 48 bucks. You're sitting around about what I am at as well. I want to say that my average buy cost might be a little bit more uh, this year. I've been paying up a lot lately, trying to stay away from stuff that needs a lot of work, a lot of stuff that's kind of slow selling. So I've been paying up for good inventory so far this year. And I, I'm my buy cost is probably sitting at like $11 per pair this, this year. But still, in my opinion, a pretty good buy cost for the area I'm living in. Nine bucks is, is amazing. I'm trying to get back down to that. Creeping up over the last six months or so in the local thrifts. Yeah, it makes sense. Is anybody in the chat have any experience with dumpster diving? Want to share in some weird finds that they found from the trash can? Because I've I've still got more. There, there's there's some more coming up that you wouldn't believe I found in the trash can. I'm trying to find the next one. I just sold one yesterday, actually. This one took longer to sell than I expected. And I also I just really want to brag about this picture taking because there's just a lot of bragging going on around here. What's it worth? Another great app resource. I've never used it, uh, but I will be looking it up when this stream ends. So if you guys haven't heard of what's it worth, maybe go check that one out. But in the meantime, in that same little hall with all the empty boxes and that Skyrim thing from the dumpster, I found this Pokemon Monopoly. Now, back in the early days of reselling for me, I found this at the thrift store and I can't remember what I sold it for, but I, this isn't the first time I've sold Pokemon Monopoly, but I found this thing in the trash can and it was, it's like they sat it up on top of something and then it fell off. So it was like open and I had to find all the pieces. I remember digging for, uh, which one was it? Bulbasaur probably forever. And I finally found it sitting there underneath some trash and counted up every single little piece Listed this bad boy up on eBay with that beautiful cover photo. Like every single little thing is displayed. Some of you guys are probably uh, not video game, but board game sellers in the chat. And you're telling me, and you're probably thinking this is the worst way to photograph board games. But you know, I think it looks really good. And this bad boy sold for full price. I initially listed it at 49, but then it was listed for like a week and a half. And I thought this was going to be something that sold instantly. Uh, Cause I couldn't make up my mind if I wanted to part it out or not, but I had a complete set. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to list this up at 49 plus the 14 45 shipping and ended up lowering it down to 39 and it sold once again, once again, that one haul, that one little haul out of my dumpster netted me like, I, I haven't been doing math here, but like $250. Name another, name, name another business that you can start by going into your trash can. I mean, technically you can start any business if you want to start the reselling side and then fund the other business, but tell me like, tell me another business model where you can go to the trash can, find someone's trash, sell it online. And that kickstarts an actual reselling business. Like it's just, it's just too easy. 
Jennifer said she's inspired to go check out her teenager's room, AKA dumpster. Um, Elizabeth sold some unicorn kid slippers from the dumpster, just washed it and it was like new. Yeah. People, people, shoes are another thing that people just undervalue really quickly. People, there's a, there's a good chunk of people, especially when I'm talking to, uh, you know, people I run into that ask what I do, uh, a good percentage of people that I tell that I sell used shoes on the internet, they're like, used shoes are a thing. Who's buying used shoes? I, I, people don't know. So people wear shoes three, four times and end up donating them or throwing them into the trash because they don't think anybody else is going to want to put their feet in them. They don't think they're cleanable. I don't know. Shoes are just a huge, huge arbitrage. You'll probably find a lot in your dumpster. But I also feel like the smaller items like shoes probably end up in trash bags. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to like push the line at all. Like this is a fun little thing I'm doing on the side just to show how easy it is to get started reselling. And it's just a fun little way for me to make some, you know, side money. I call this my side hustle because my main hustle is reselling shoes, even though the side hustle is basically the same thing as my main hustle. But having this secondary eBay store that I'm selling this stuff on, uh, it's just been a fun way to, sh you know, show how easy again it is to, get into reselling. And I just noticed that I got off topic. I was about to rant on not pushing the line. I'm not going to start digging through sealed trash bags. I feel, I feel like that's a little weird, um, but I'm sure you can find some <laughs> spectacular things. If you want to get down and dirty inside that trash bag, I won't judge you. You might get um, some police called. I don't know the rules on that. You might want to look that up, but I'm going to pass, but like no, no judgment. If you guys want to dig through some, some trash bags, get back over here to the chat for a second. Uh, bearded pokey tuber did some gamestop dumpster diving i've heard i've heard of gamestop dumpster diving um i if i need to get some time <laughs> to go do that that sounds like a lot of fun i've heard some gems that people are uh, that are finding at gamestop in the dumpster uh did that when i was in college about 10 years ago found some games here and there but it was only collecting not reselling at the time that's pretty much how i would be i do have a, a minor video game collection urge so that would, that would be a lot of fun just found a bunch of brand new bubble wrap ones. As for selling, scored a bunch of excellent condition baseball caps. High end, nice. That's that's amazing. The bubble wrap is a good find. Uh, I don't use any bubble wrap, but you know, resellers, I know you guys use a bunch of bubble wrap. That's got to be a killer find. I'm sure that you could probably resell it on Facebook Marketplace too, depending on how much you got. But bubble wrap, that's a nice one. Curb find was a vintage oil canvas painting of horses racing. It was colorful and beautiful, but being an animal rescue advocate, I couldn't keep it. So I shared on Marketplace and made $50 on it off of a canvas painting that they found on the side of the road. It's just easy money, guys. Easy money. I failed miserably at reselling because my bills were more than my profits. That is the most common story. That, that happens all the time. Sw um, switching from having an income set every single month and that's it. You just have your income and you have your bills. It's a big transition to go from having income bills and reinvest into more uh, products, if that makes sense. Because you can't just take all of your profits and pay your bills. You got to save some of that and use it to invest into more inventory. That's why it's, it's usually the best method is to not just jump into reselling full-time. I know a lot of people don't have the option. Maybe they got laid off or maybe they're just stuck some in life somehow and they don't have a job and they want to get into reselling. Uh, but it, it takes, it takes a certain breed to just be able to jump into reselling and just knowing how much to save. You got to get really good at bookkeeping. You got to get really good at budgeting, but it can be done. I failed. I did the same exact thing. I thought that I would be able to go full-time reselling right after getting fired from my job and that did not work. So I had to go back and get a part-time job. I did a whole video talking about that whole experience called, um, I can't remember what I called it. I think I could just call it, I failed at being a full-time reseller. If you guys wanna go check that out after this live stream's over. Uh, I think it's the second most viewed video on the channel. So that might be an easy way to find it. Um, where are we at, where are we at? I can't believe you don't have a video from your dumpster finds. They are really good stuff. I might get around to that. The, see, the thing is, there's just so few and far between. Like I mentioned, my apartment complex, like the, the maintenance people, 
they they don't let you get into the the area like the dumpster area for large items it's like locked can't get in there and then anything else anything bulky that's like left outside there uh whenever they get a chance they'll they'll take it and they'll go put it in a uh garage i don't know if they resell i don't know what they do with it i don't know if they just like bulk sell it to uh one of those companies that takes all your trash but you got to hit the right window so it's like once twice every month i'm finding stuff uh, but i might get around to making an, a dedicated youtube video about it you know technically this one is a youtube video about about it we're talking about it uh just no first person action uh but this is going to live on e on on ebay on youtube so here's the video <laughs> um where are we at i got my ex-boyfriend to start selling on ebay from thrift finds in his parents old basement stuff like a train set nice I thought the same thing a few years ago. Anyone doing books or college books? I tried doing books for a while. You know, when you first get started reselling, you want to try out every single thing. That's not a bad thing. I think that it's smart when you're getting into reselling to try literally every single option and see what it is you like the best. I just could not stand. I got my, uh, don't go nowhere. I'm going to grab it right now. I got my phone case with the, uh, batteries are dead, but the Bluetooth scanner. I used to go with my phone, had the, uh, whatever that app was called and scan books in Goodwill for hours. And I hated it, <laughs> but, uh, I, the people that actually do books are killing it. Uh, I just, I didn't find enough profit to make it exciting enough. Uh, do, do, do you list these, your same shoes, eBay account or a different account? Uh, all these are listed on a different account. Uh, my my buddies chris and drew and matt they were making fun of me about this the other day i just don't i have a lot of people that follow my ebay store and they know that i'm posting shoes every single day and like that's the reason they followed me is because they know what i'm listing every single day and when they go to my store they know that they can shop for shoes in there as opposed to just seeing a bunch of random stuff and i i really pushed the the idea of having a store like salty souls is my ebay store you go there and you find shoes I didn't want to list a bunch of other random stuff on that eBay. So I went ahead and I've had this secondary eBay account created for a long time now. Uh, so I just listed it up on there. I don't pay for the store subscription or whatever. Uh, just a, just a secondary eBay account to sell old stuff or stuff that I find like this. Do, 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 do. It was the only part of the thrift store I used to never go to. Now it's the first and most of the time only. I honestly, I think same. Same when I first got started reselling first, it was garage sales only going to garage sales. Cause you can get stuff so cheap. That's another, I haven't even touched on that yet. All this free stuff that we're getting from the dumpster, instead of going to the bins, if your bins suck, or if you don't have a bins close to you and your thrift stores are too expensive, just wait for the weekend, go garage selling. I guarantee you, you can find some stuff for a dollar, $2, $3. That is a perfect vehicle into launching your reselling business. But, um, what were we talking about? Shoes at the thrift store. Yes. When I first got started reselling was all garage sales, 100% garage sales. I was honestly afraid to go into a thrift store. I wasn't afraid. It was just like, it just seemed so foreign. Um, so when I eventually got around to going to the thrift store, I was, it was like, all I was watching was rally roots at the time. And I think, uh, side hustle network Chaz, I think that's their YouTube name. I was watching a lot of them and rally roots and they sold a lot of electronics at the time. I think I think I'm trying to remember this properly, but at the time, every time I went to the thrift store, it was straight to the, to the electronics. Uh, I hated since day one, hated going through clothes. So I would never, never go through the racks and I'd peek at all the hard goods and then I'd leave. I wouldn't even think to glance at the shoes. Uh, now it's the only thing that I look at unless I'm thrifting with Miss Carly and I get to go through the whole store. That is kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. I missed the casual thrifting that I was missing out on while I was only thrifting by myself and hitting the shoes and shoes only. I rarely pay for shipping. I found two pairs of shoes in a free pile worth over a hundred dollars each. I don't know why this came to my mind, but I remember when my grandma was living in a nursing home one day I went in there and this was like, I was early on in shoe reselling, but I was, I was reselling shoes and I was visiting her. And as I was leaving, there was like a shoe donation box sitting right next to the door. I peek in there and there's some new balance, like the comfy, like they weren't nine nineties. I can't remember what model they were, but they're like the comfy, like the Walker new balances, the, the leather top, 
um, made probably made in the USA. I don't know, but I was, I saw those. I knew those were worth money. I seen two pairs of Bionics that somebody just dropped in this box. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm already at the exit. Like I, I'm already here. I could just, you know, pick this up. They'd never know. But you know, my, my morals outweighed my, um, desire for profits in that certain situation. Have you gotten in trouble for diving? No, I have never gotten in trouble for it. I have got some weird looks though, but you know, you get weird looks for thrifting too. So we're just used to it about now. Oscar, the grouch impersonations. Um, I, I'm not too up to, like, I haven't seen, what's that? Sesame street. I haven't seen Sesame street in a hot minute. So I, you know, I don't really have something to go off of there. Grew up watching Sanford and son. So this is up my alley. What was your best flip? Um, my best flip. Probably those golf clubs. I mean, they were they were free and I sold them for $150. Um, they're definitely not my most expensive sale. I've sold plenty of shoes over $150, but none that I've gotten for free. Uh, probably the two most that I have sold shoes, the two most high, the highest dollar amounts that I've sh sold shoes for. Um, I sold some Alden Chuck a they weren't chocolate boots. They're just boots. Alden boots, the dress shoe company, uh, sold those for $400 plus shipping. They shipped to Italy and they paid $50 to get shipped. So total purchase price of a hundred or $450. And I got those in a Goodwill in little old Tulsa, Oklahoma for $25. And then most recently I found a pair of Christian Louboutin craft heels. They, they honestly, I was concerned on their legitness, their, their authenticity, because the shoes were literally made out of, uh, Lubitin shopping bags, like the brown paper bags that they ripped up and then they encased into a PVC plastic and then turned them into heels. And they were sitting in the glass case at one of our local thrift stores. Uh, they initially had them priced at like $80. But the thing that I like about this thrift store, cause it's not Goodwill. They don't have a bins to just like, you know, whatever doesn't sell, we're just going to toss it to the bins. They, they price things down, they run sales and they eventually price these down to $18. And I think everybody else in town also was concerned about their authenticity because they sat there at $18 until they went half off. I honestly don't know why it took me so long to pull the trigger on them, but I got them for $9, uh, thrifting with Ethan. If he's still in here, uh, he's probably too busy for me though. Got them with Ethan and I sold them on Poshmark for, I'm going to have to look this one up. You know, want to give me a second. It was a lot of money. I was sitting on the beach. This was the, this was a good day. It was a good day. I was on the beach and then my phone gets a notification that I sold some Christian Louboutins. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I sold them for $475. So after fees, that's $380. That's what they look like right there. Sold those for $475 on Poshmark. They make you send them to Poshmark and have them authenticated for anything over $500. And I had them listed at 590, 599 buyer sent me a $475 offer. Obviously I'm taking that. I only paid $9 for them. Um, I'm not the, I'm not the guy that holds out for the highest price. If I get a good profitable offer, I'm taking that. So obviously turning $9 into $380, I'm expecting that all day. Buyer got them five star rating. Obviously, I did my due diligence. I researched them, used Google Lens. I found some articles written about them. Like I was pretty pretty certain that they were authentic. Uh, but those were my two best flips. Just said hitting community yard sales near the end of the day often makes for lots of free finds. That is a another good tip, especially on Sundays. I want to say. I haven't, I don't usually go to garage. So I haven't been to a garage sale in probably two years, but you know, I'm, I'm imagining Sundays or maybe Saturdays for the people that don't do garage sales on Sundays, the last, excuse me, the last day of that garage sale, people are probably just trying to get rid of stuff. They're already set up to sell. Nobody purchased. That might be a, a key place to get some free inventory to kickstart your reselling business. I started thrifting shoes about a month, a month ago because of you. Congratulations. There's so much money to be made in shoes. I love shoes. Thanks for being here, Ken Pai, if I pronounced that right. I met Flea Market Hunters last summer while I was selling. Um, I'm not I'm not familiar with who that is. I, that probably looks bad on me. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at watching content. It sounds like a TV show though. That's a good, if they're a YouTuber, that's a really good name because that, like I could, I could see that being on a HGTV. Is that the right channel? ABC? I don't know. Flea market hunters. That sounds like a good name. 
Uh, yes, clothes clothes fines for like a dollar each is great or fine or for change under a buck. A lot of stuff. Leanne says you and Carly look like you are having so much fun together on the good days. We are on the good days, but there's a lot. I'm, I'm just kidding. Every day is a great day with Carly. Ain't that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for being here, Leanne. Cole says, honest opinion about eBay authentic authentication. I dislike the process. I can, I can guarantee you this. I dislike it probably as much, if not more than you do. I had to authenticate a pair of Nike Roshis, a pair of Nike Roshis. When's the last time you saw somebody wearing a pair of Nike Roshis? Those went out of style like five years ago. They're not worth anything. I just happened to have like a semi good colorway. They were like a Tiffany blue. And I sold them for $40 plus shipping. And eBay made me send them to them to get authenticated. So if there's someone from eBay watching this, there's no reason to authenticate $40 Roshis. Sending me a FedEx label, the whole process of like having, like I didn't have brown boxes to just ship shoes in. I have big brown boxes that I ship boots in because occasionally I'll need to ship boots UPS because they're really heavy and they're going cross country. So I've been shipping regular size shoes in a 16 by 12 by eight box, because that's the only box I have that I can ship FedEx with. And I'm not going to be that guy that abuses the system and just ships them in a priority box. I know a lot of people are getting away with it, but I'm just, it's just not for me. I, I don't like their authentication. I'm glad that they're offering authentication. I think that it adds a lot to their platform. It's bringing a lot of people back to eBay or a lot of people to eBay that otherwise never would have been on eBay because now they have that level of trust because for a while there, eBay was that platform that everybody didn't want to buy sneakers from because there was the concern of inauthenticity. A lot of fake shoes were being sold on eBay and they've been on, they've been doing a lot to combat, combat that. I'm glad that they're authenticating things. I'm glad that I'm not having to pay shipping, but like if I could just ship USPS, that would make my life so much easier. So eBay, if you're watching, let's, let's get rid of the FedEx deal. Sign a deal with USPS, please, please. Beard Pokétuber said the same thing. I don't mind it, but I wish they didn't make a ship FedEx for shipping. Lex said, I'm waiting to run into you and Carly one day. My boyfriend and I always go to that Kissimmee Goodwill where you film the grand opening. You'll probably hit us one day soon. We go there semi-frequently. That's a really good store. Um, they've, they've uh, you know, when they did the grand opening, you watched the video. You know I was talking about how the prices were really good on grand opening and they're probably just going to go up like the winter garden goodwill did. And those prices skyrocketed. I expected that store to do the same thing, but they really didn't super cheap since the grand opening. But lately they've started to, you know, start stepping up the price ladder. So well, I'm, I'm hoping that they hit a ceiling pretty quick. Mr. Sean met me at the grand goodwill grand opening. It was great to meet you. Thanks for popping into the live. Elise said, hi, yay, I caught a live. Thanks for being here. Uh, hopefully I'll be doing these once a week. Um, I've been putting it off for a while now. I want to hop on here and, you know, have a have a themed live. And I can talk to you guys about a topic or something for about an hour. So hopefully you'll catch me next Tuesday. Normally going to do these on Tuesday, but I figured, you know, I put it off for two weeks. I wasn't going to put it off another week because my Tuesday was Valentine's Day. So I'm just going to do this one on a Monday. Next week, we're probably looking at Tuesday around 11 30 a.m or 12 30 one of the two i can't remember 12 30 carly said in the other room <laughs> 40 dollars for authentication i thought they had a limit over 100 no they did away with the limit of over 100 i really don't know what goes into their determination of what gets authenticated um i don't know i really don't know but i sold the roshis for 40 dollars plus shipping and they had to be authenticated uh, Cole says, if it could go through USPS or we go back to pick it would, or we got to pick it, it would be great. But having to travel to FedEx and find a different box is a pain. Yeah. I, the FedEx thing was annoying for me as well, but I also learned that Walgreens has a FedEx drop off and they scan it for you. So there's like no real worry about, you know, dropping off at a Walgreens. Is this, is this actually going to get scanned into the system? Is this going to get lost? Um, they actually scan them in there once you drop them off at Walgreens. And there's a Walgreens right next door to my USPS. Only annoying thing for me is the boxes. I, I mean, I wish I didn't have to make that extra extra stop, but the boxes are, <laughs> hate them. All right, lost my spot. Where are we at? Where are we at? Do you know 
do you just keep the shipping charge then for eBay authentication? Um, so the way that the shipping works with eBay authentication is um, it's it's free to you. The eBay charges the buyer fourteen ninety five, and then eBay sends you the label. It's kind of like Poshmark or Goat or StockX, wherein once the thing is purchased, you're going to get emailed a label. Um, it's it's practically like that. You don't have to worry about paying for shipping. You're not going to make money on shipping. You're not going to lose money on shipping. Basically, on the authenticated pairs, you're just paying fees. Cole said, I had a pair of $20 New Balances go to authentication when they first rolled it out a few months ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm not surprised. I, I'm not surprised. Malte Erickson, hello. Thank you for being here. Um, not sure what language that's in, but I hope that you can understand me. I hope there's like some, YouTube needs to do some like translation system. They need to get that some AI built into this so that I can just go live in every single country and I'm like real time being translated. That would be the coolest thing ever. Uh, Beard Pokey Tuber says, yeah, I don't mind the hassle of FedEx for expensive pairs, but like Dalton said, I've had $60 shoes have to get authenticated. It is in fact a bit ridiculous. Yep. Um, so Beard Pokey Tuber also said that it's not based on the price. It's based on brand and model now, which again is weird. I, I don't know what they do to determine that because first off $20 new balances, that's ridiculous. Uh, I've had vans go to authentication. Um, the like collaboration vans, I've had those go to authentication. That kind of makes sense. Like I could see those being um, fate, but I, I've also had some like regular, not not like regular vans, but some vans. I'm trying to picture what they were. I remember being so confused because I sold some vans for like $60. So just like not a crazy expensive van sell, but more than just like a basic one. And I don't know if I put some weird item to, item specifics in there that made them think they, they were like something more than they, what they were, but yeah, those had to get authenticated, which was dumb. Uh, Gab Gab Franco says, I love you, Carly. Carly, did you hear that? <laughs> she said, oh, I love you too. Get that girl a cookie. She's got plenty. Don't we have cookies in there? Oh yeah, we got Girl Scout cookies. We got, we got, um, not, not scammed. We didn't get scammed. We just, you know, went to Publix. There was a table of Girl Scout cookies. Just called out to us. Oh, now we got a bunch of cookies. We got a bunch of cookies. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sean, does it matter the brand? I sell Johnson and Murphy dress shoes. Would that get flagged? Um, flagged for what? Are we still talking about authentication? Not sure. Not sure. Um, total waste of time. If we're talking about authentication still, yes, yes. In fact, what are you and Carly's plans for Valentine's Day? Our plans are probably going to sound pretty boring, but to us, super exciting. We're not working. We're not doing anything. Both of us are the kind of people that have so much going on. Like I do reselling and YouTube. I sell shoe trees. I got all these things that I do all day. Carly also has all these things. You know, she does reselling. She does Etsy. She's got her booth. She, we all have so much going on that we can pack every single one of our days from beginning to end full of work. And we do that 90% of the days. So tomorrow, we're not working. We're not shipping. We're not doing anything. We're just having an us day. We are, um, I asked, she's, she's still not caught up on, uh, the Marvel cinematic universe. So I asked her if we could watch a movie. So I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Fingers are crossed. Fingers are crossed. <laughs> the style code is what flags it for authentication. Uh, Cole said, I had an eBay representative say it was mostly popular models from well-known brands that are usually authenticated, but it seems like there's no actual criteria for the process. Phoenix Flippers, what's up? Thanks for being here. What's up, everyone? Um, <laughs> Mr. Sean says, wait till Crocs go to authentication. I guarantee you that there are some Crocs that go to authentication. There are some hyped up Crocs. I'm surprised the staff at eBay can cover that many varieties of shoes. That's true. That's true. I don't know how... Uh, how strict the hiring process was. I don't know what the hiring process looked like, but they just rolled out this authentication and now they're just having so many shoes authenticated. Diane D said, did Carly make your shirt? What's up, Diane? Of course we did. Yeah. I, ha I have to say, I have to say hi because my mom's here. <laughs> hi everyone. Hi Carly's mom. Hi. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Look at that. Carly made an appearance. Bobby says eBay authentication. This, this, you know, this, this live stream, I'm going to have to change the title now. We're just like, we just went full sin on eBay authentication. Maybe next week we'll just rant on this again. 
Uh, just kidding. But Bobby said, eBay authentication saved me from a neutral feedback. Buyer had a bad experience from me, so eBay wouldn't remove the feedback. However, their policy is that if it goes through authentication, they remove the feedback. And it was a $20 pair of Vans. Uh, that's funny. Yes, so I don't... So currently, I have one negative feedback on my account. And, you know, it was my fault. Yeah, I, I will admit I have, it was my fault, but negative feedbacks are pretty easy to get rid of if you're doing eBay. I wouldn't say the right way, but like if you're selling like clothing or just like everyday shoes, it kind of makes sense to do the, the, the free returns model um, just to give buyers confidence. Like when you're selling just a generic pair of vans, you need to give ev give eBay every single reason to recommend your listing over the thousands of other listings. So the, the free returns, it just makes sense in most cases with categories that are super competitive, if that makes sense. Um, so, so I have the free 60 day returns turned on and that's pretty much gonna get me out of any negative feedback. But just a couple of weeks ago, I sold two pairs of, Nike Air Max 90s and they were both the exact same colorway except one was a women's size 7 and one was a youth size 3 and don't tell me don't don't ask me how I got the two sizes mixed up because you hold them next to each other and one's like half the size of the other but I was probably just so caught up in my shipping that I just put them in and didn't even think about it and so I mixed up one of each pair so each buyer got one 3y and a women's seven or whatever it was. The first buyer receives it in like Puerto Rico, I think it was a sale to Puerto Rico. And um, I get this message from them in Spanish, went to translate it. And then she was not happy. She was very upset about these shoes. She thought I was scamming her this, that, and the other. So I got a negative feedback. I responded to her, tried to do some damage control and she never responded. I've messaged her three times since then. She opened a return. Her return got approved. So she's sending the shoes back. She's going to get a full refund. And I messaged eBay on Facebook, eBay for business. I'm like, Hey, can I get this feedback removed? And they're like, I could probably message them again and get another agent, but I'm not super worried about it right now because 99.9% .9 positive feedback doesn't bother me too much. I know it's going to go away, but they can't take it away until the case is closed. And funny enough, she won't ship the shoes back. So I got to wait until the, I think it's two week, 15 day. I don't know, whatever the window is that they have to ship the shoes back. I have to wait until that expires and the case gets closed. The other buyer was understanding. They, they also came off really upset at the beginning, but they were understanding. They shipped them back and I refunded them. I told them when I get the shoes from the other buyer, I will just ship them their shoes for free since I screwed up. and. Now I'm having to message them and be like, sorry, the other buyer's not shipping their shoes back. Uh, they already got their refund. They're fine, but I still have this negative feedback from this person that's ignoring all my messages and doesn't want to ship the shoes back. And I'm kind of upset because now I have two mismatched shoes that I can't sell. I'm not going to sell them as amputee um, because I, I don't know, that just doesn't really work for me. I know a lot of people do, do it, but I, they, if I did that, they'd just sit in my inventory for two years before they'd sell. Um, I get to keep the money from the other sale but the one that didn't ship their shoes back was the three Y sale. So it sold for half the price of the other shoes. So I'm just like, you know, I'm out the money for this, the women's seven, which is the more valuable pair. And now I just got to go take those other ones to Goodwill rant over. Um, I don't even remember what you guys asked to put me on that. Anyway, FedEx authentication doesn't ship to Puerto Rico, unlike USPS. So people from Puerto Rico can't buy authenticated items from eBay. Interesting. I did not know that. How many shoes do you sell in a regular weekday? Um, usually um, like around 10, 10 to 12. I list uh, 20 on the weekdays, five on the 20 per day on the weekdays, five per day on the weekends. And yeah, I think it averages out to about 10 to 12 per day. I pull it, don't be sorry about starting the authentication rant. rant. I do a rant about it because I... Um, I had 990 sent back to me from eBay authentication because the size tag was faded when it was described and listing as such. I have an experience just like that. Here we go. I was supposed to wrap this thing up in an hour, but we got a few more minutes because I got <laughs> I have to rant on this one too. I sold a pair of uh, Nike Dunk Lows from 2002. Um, I can't, I, I think the colorway was like salmon. I think they had like a, I'm not too versed in my shoes, but they had a, they had a salmon stitched into the back. 
I don't know. They sold for a couple hundred dollars. A really good sale. I was excited about. But the Nike size tag on the inside was like dried out and it started cracking and the size tag fell out. Um, and that was in the in the listing. The picture of the size tag was taken on my photo backdrop. It wasn't inside the shoe. So I took a picture of the size tag. In the description, I said, the size tag fell out. These do not have a size tag. Shipped them off to eBay authentic authentication. And they sent them back to me because they can't authenticate them because they don't have the size tag when in the description it said it doesn't have the size tag. And you can look at the picture and see the size tag is in the shoe, but uh, I digress. Anyway, Phoenix Flipper, I've started getting shoes from online auctions. I rarely go to the thrift stores anymore for shoes. Well, don't be just telling people. There's 55 people in the chat. You don't want to just tell people where you're buying shoes. I'm just kidding. Uh, I've heard of a lot of, I've heard of people doing that before. I should probably check that out. That sounds like fun. I did the exact same thing and the $20 new balances were returned. Oof. I would take the laces and insoles out of shoes that you can't sell. That is, that is a solid tip. Bobby coming in with the tip of the day, taking the laces and insoles out of the shoes before you go and donate them. Because as I'm sure, you know, sometimes we go into thrift stores and we see some uh, shoes on the shelf that don't have insoles and don't have laces or one of the, one or the other. But if we take those laces out, take those insoles out and save them, now we got something to put in those shoes. I do the same thing. I have a whole bin full of insoles and laces from all the bad buys that I've had in the past. Most of them came from like buying in bulk and the shoes that weren't good enough to sell that were getting donated. Uh, I'd pull them out of those. Phoenix Flipper says, I didn't say what auction site I was using. It's smart. We should keep it that way. Anyway, we are up over an hour. I'll give you guys a couple more minutes if you have any questions in the chat. But in the meantime, I'll just like kind of wrap up this whole video. We started out talking about ways to get started reselling with zero dollars down. If you are just now catching the ending of this, if you're catching it live, we're just we're just gonna recap the first 30 minutes of the show. But Easy ways to get started reselling with no money down. If you got something in your closet or your home that you're just not using anymore, go ahead and list that bad boy up on eBay. Maybe there's a market for it. Maybe there's not. You got nothing to lose or no money. We're going to try to find a buyer. Adam, Baldy Pal Picking just popped in. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, Dalton? I found two pair of Jordan knee highs today. 100% fake or Reno, but looked like they'd be worth 100 bucks if real. I've never even seen Jordan <laughs> Jordan uh, knee highs. Those sound interesting. Did you post them on Instagram? Because I'm going to have to go check that out. Or did you post them on your story or something? Because that seems like a fun fake arena. Anyway, anyway, we knocked out it. If you got something in your house worth selling, but maybe, maybe you just don't have something in your house that is worth selling because there's not like you don't want it. So that doesn't mean someone else out there wants it. It's probably crap. You need some other some income to go start your reselling business. What I've been doing lately is dumpster. Dump. I live in an apartment complex and people stuff all the time. I sold a $25 on eBay. I found a Pokemon Monopoly in the trash, complete that for $39 plus shipping. I found a whole set of Titleist golf clubs in the trash can, sold them locally for $150. We've been talking about Checking the curbs, checking the free section on Facebook, checking the free section on next door, um, upcycling furniture. If you see some furniture on the side of the road, maybe you can just go grab that, stain it, finish it, flip it, make a little bit of money. And then we're going to, and then you're going to go to dealing with Dalton's YouTube channel. We're going to go look at from the closet to profit or pretty much any of his other videos and just see how to, how to really get started on your shoe reselling business because shoes is just the way to go guys. I mean, between you and me, it's not the way to go. Like I'm not trying to get more competition. out here. If you live in Florida, it's not the way to go. But if you live outside of Florida, shoes are the way to go. Phoenix Flipper says, what is your best shoe flip ever? I talked about that about 20 minutes ago. I don't want to get back into it because I was just, I'll just start ranting. You guys are see how the, how the rants are flowing tonight. Um, so catch that on the replay about 20 minutes ago. Thank you guys so much for being here. See about 50 of you in the chat right now. Thanks so much. Again, we'll be doing these every Tuesday, probably moving forward with a little topic and we'll just see how these lives go. But thank you for being here and hopefully I'll see you next week. Peace out.